Ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to imagine the following scenario. You're about to play a match on Advanced Wars by Web on the Global League. You're queuing up, you're selecting your CO, and then the match is finally ready. And as you are about to jump into it, you hear something in the distance. Something you haven't heard in a while, but it sounds kind of familiar. What could it possibly be? This is what opponents of Grim Guy hear when they're about to get shellacked on the Global League. Ladies and gentlemen, today I am going to show you an absolutely insane account. Uh, one of the more fun players to come along in a very long while. Now let me just get this out of the way. Grim Alts, there's nothing new about them. They've been around on this site for as long as the site has existed. I mean, just search for them and you'll find hundreds of accounts that just love to smash noobs as Grim. Why? Because it's fun. Who doesn't love to go and stomp some fresh 800s, you know? But this guy takes it a step further. This guy has actually been able to reach 1300 MMR. And not only that, he is stomping players who are very consistently highly rated. And he's doing it as Grim, while they are playing actually good CEOs. This has garnered him quite a lot of attention because, as I said, well, there's nothing new about Grim ults. This guy just seems to have figured Grim out. Whoever he is, he's very good. People are trying to figure out who the hell this guy is. He's actually very close to getting into the top 10 standard uh, scoreboard. Just look at this. He's number 16 at the time of recording this video, and he's just rising higher day by day. Soon he's gonna be in the top 10. I mean, people are making memes about this guy. This was one that I got. <laughs> so I figured, you know what? This guy definitely warrants a video because whoever he is, he is insanely strong. Uh, a lot of people are trying to figure out who he is. I messaged him myself, and he did get back to me. He said he didn't want to reveal his identity. He thought it was more fun when people were trying to guess who he was. So uh, I do have some theories, though, and I'll save that to the end of the video. For now, I'm going to cast this very interesting match where he plays against a guy named Vector25. Uh, never heard about this guy before, this is the first time I cast one of his matches, but he is a strong player, his rating uh, says as much. He is rated 1300. Whenever you get above the 1300 MMR range, that means you're dealing with a very good player. Some people, they might be able to get up into 1100, 1200 if they're lucky, you know, if they snowball very fast, only play Fog of War. But once you get into the 1300 MMR range, that means you're in the top 5% of players in the world, so that means you're no slouch. Obviously this guy, he's no Inkugark, he's no Starflash, he's no he's no Tordred or Degis, but he's still a very strong player. And he is playing as a tier 1 CO. This is a Grim versus Von Bolt matchup, ladies and gentlemen. Tier 4 versus tier 1. And he's playing against a 1300 MMR rated player. Th this shouldn't this shouldn't even be a match. Th he should just get stomped. But you're about to see, Grim Guy, he doesn't only play really well as Grim, he stomps his opponents and he does it in the most disrespectful way I've ever seen. This guy BMs. He literally throws units at, at his opponents to insult them. It, it's hilarious. I haven't seen anyone play Grim like this ever. So how does he do it? Well, we're about to find out. First things first, let's just take a look at Grim and what he can do. Like, first of all, Grim is a noob trap for a lot of people. You know, people think he's great because he has the highest firepower in the game. I mean, he's got a day-to-day 30% -day bonus to firepower. Only Kumbai goes this high, and he is banned in almost every single game. So, uh, you're only going to see numbers like this when you play as Grim. His powers are very simple. They just rise his firepower. I mean, he gets a 90% bonus from his Haymaker. I mean, that is incredible. There's no other CEOs on Advanced Wars by Web that goes this high, not even Max. Maybe Colin with power of money, but again, Colin is banned, so it doesn't really matter. Of course, he pays a very steep price for this. He pays 20% penalty to his defense, which means that Grimm's units just evaporate. Defense is much more uh, valuable than firepower in Advanced Wars due to the way it stacks with terrain. And the fact that Grim gets 20% less defense just means that he cannot wall under any circumstances. He needs to come out swinging, and he needs to swing fast and hard. I often compare Grim to like a heavyweight champion in boxing that hits really hard, but he can't take any punches at all. Like, he gets one punch, and then if he doesn't knock out his opponent, then he will get knocked out himself. The problem with Grim is that the one thing that he really wants is to strike first, and yet he doesn't have any movement-boosting powers. So if he goes up against any CEOs with a movement-boosting power, he's going to struggle a lot. 
Luckily for him, Von Bolt doesn't have any movement boosting powers. He just has that 10% bonus to his defense, which makes him very strong. Von, uh, Von Bolt is considered the safe pick of tier 1, he's never a bad pick. But what's funny about Grim, I actually did some uh, calculations going into this uh, replay, and I noticed something very interesting. Uh, first things first, if Grim has a single comm tower, his units can actually dislodge Von Bolt's tanks on cities with, with a two-hit KO. So that means if you have two tanks as, as Grim, you can kill a Von Bolt tank on a city with one comm tower. This is pretty huge. One of the reasons why Von Bolt is so strong is because he puts his tanks on cities and they're incredibly hard to dislodge. This makes him a very good waller. Furthermore, if you have a single comm tower, which you do have on this map, and you pop your normal power, Grimm's tanks can actually one-shot Von Bolt uh, infantry on planes, 100% of the time, which is absolutely huge. One of the things that makes Von Bolt so hard to defeat is the fact that he has this, one of the strongest infantry walls in the, in the game, and Grimm can just punch through that with his normal power. So Grimm, his matchup against Von Bolt actually isn't as bad as you might think. Um, the Grandmasters have told me something funny, and that's the fact that Grimm is very unique in that he actually has better matchups against the Tier 3 COs than he does the Tier 4 COs. This is because the Tier 4 COs are filled with movement boosting powers. You have Adder, you have Jake, you have Jess, and you have Cole. Four COs which boost movement, and that is Grimm's worst nightmare, because he doesn't want to be struck first. But against some of the higher level COs, they don't have movement boosting powers, and Von Bolt is one of those COs, he doesn't get any faster, which means that Grimm has a chance of being able to strike first, which is what he really wants to do. Now, what we're going to do right now is we're going to go into the map. I'm going to show you guys. This is called Golden Probe Redux. And this is an interesting uh, map. It, it looks deceptively open. It looks very open, but I find that it's actually not as open as you might think because of these rivers here. You're separating the battlefield essentially into three fronts. You have a uh, uh, you actually even have some rivers in the middle here, but I don't find that these rivers often come into play. But you have the battle in the center, which is pretty normal, and then you have two flanks right here. But these rivers are very hard to cross, and whoever can control these bridges usually end up uh, really controlling this map. Artillery can be very strong here. You plunk an artillery down here, for example, it controls both of these two bridges. You can place infantry on the bridges too, and they're going to be very hard to punch through unless you have infantry yourself who can go into the river and shoot them from the side. Of course, Grim doesn't do this as reliably because he has less defense. But uh, I, I often find that whoever can control the rivers and the bridges tends to do really well in this matchup. There are airports here, and that's very good for Grim because he loves battlecopters. He absolutely loves battlecopters. There are two units that Grim does very well with, battlecopters and bombers. The reason why these are so strong on Grim is because he they die to anti anyway. The, the reduced defense doesn't matter. But they, they do a an absolutely insane amount of damage. So as Grim, you want to spam battlecopters a lot. If you pop your powers with the battlecopters, they can just eat through enemy tanks. It's insane. But you also have to be careful, because on Golden Probe Pro Redux, there's a base here that is very close to your airport. And you can actually see that if you build an entire here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. If it doesn't get blocked off here, then you can actually lock down the enemy's airport in two turns. Uh, of course, all you need to do is place a single unit here, but it can reach in three turns. So once this entire gets closed, this, this airport can become very hard to produce units out of. So you gotta defend it properly. And of course, defense isn't Grimm's forte. But what Grimm wants to do here is just to shellac Von Bolt in the center of the map. And well, <laughs> let's just see how Grimm guy goes about it because this guy plays Grimm on a level that I haven't seen before. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the match. So, starting off with uh, this map right here, um, you want to try and capture the, the base very early on, but I'm going to show you something very interesting that Grim Guy does, and I have to wonder if he does it as a BM move, or if he's figured something out. Everyone that plays this map that I have seen, they, they skip this property and they go straight for the base. It's not uncommon to begin again capturing here, a lot of people do this uh, out of habit. But you'll see something very strange from Grim Guy here. Something that I've never seen before. He actually captures the city instead of going for the base. So already, he's very unorthodox in his opener right here. This is considered a very strange move because, of course, yeah, it gives you 1,000 income sooner, but it also foregoes this base for another turn, so you're sacrificing unit count, and Grim really doesn't want to fall behind on unit count. He needs every single unit to do as much damage as possible. Considering his walls are very weak too, he needs additional units to patch up his walls. 
So uh, this is a very strange opener. I can't... I wonder if he's doing it to be rude or if he's doing it because he has some kind of build order in mind. I just want to tell you guys, this guy plays rudely. I've never seen anyone show such disrespect towards their opponents. You'll see in this replay what I'm talking about. So... I guess this might allow him to open up early recon. I'm not entirely sure if that's what he plans to do. Let's let's find out, shall we? So, I think this might be why. So, this allows him to open up tank infantry. So, I think I think he doesn't do it as a BM move. He does it because this is this allows him to open up tank. This is like watching Voice of Akasha. I'm going to be completely honest. This reminds me of how Voice of Akasha plays. I've seen Voice of Akasha do that. I don't think Voice of Akasha is a grim guy. It would be very... It could actually... Oh my god, imagine if it's Voice of Akasha. That'd, that'd be funny. That would explain a few things, too. Uh, but uh, I've seen him do this on Verdamon of Valhalla. He actually base skips, goes for the city, and then he opens up tank one turn earlier to apply pressure to his opponent. So, um... <laughs> we'll see if it pays off or not. Of course, against Von Bolts, he does have that 10% defense, but with Grimm's 30% firepower, he can punch through Von Bolt pretty easily. I mean, that, I'm not saying that 10% defense doesn't matter, but Grimm will have an easier time busting through some of Von Bolt's units. Uh, a lot easier than you might think. Anyway, so the tank comes out. Of course, Grimm is completely position dependent. He needs to place those tanks into advantageous positions. He cannot be struck first, even on cities. I'm pretty sure if Grimm places a tank on a city and Von Bolt strikes it first, I think he loses that, or I think Grimm will lose that engagement because that 20% reduction to defense is just so crippling. So uh, again, Grimm is a very high skill ceiling CO. Vector opening up a mech here. That's, I don't think I've ever seen this before. And that's an interesting opener. I mean, I guess the idea is march it down here onto the mountain, take the comm tower maybe? Not entirely sure. I mean, I think even a Von Bolt mech on a, um, on a, on a comm tower, I think even if the Grim tank strikes, I think, I, th I think he'll just eradicate the Von Bolt mech. By the way, Demon Hunter, if you're watching this, he's the guy who made the replay viewer. Can you please incorporate a damage calculator that we can open up while we, that, that would be so nice. I would really like that, so please just consider doing that. Because there are sometimes I would just love to do some calcs while I'm casting. Anyway, so Grim Guy has opened up a recon, tank recon, very aggressive opener. Recons can be pretty strong on a Golden Probe Redux, actually. There's a lot of roads for them to move around on, lots of infantry to interrupt. So, and more tanks from Grim. As I said, I'm going to speculate a little bit on who I think this guy is at the end of the video, so stick around for that if you want to watch my analysis. I'm going to go through the top 20 players, and I'm going to sort them into how likely I think they are to be Grim Guy or not. He has admitted to being an alt, so we know it's it, it has to be one of the like top 50 players in the world. So, anyway, looks like Vector is going for the uh, Comm Tower now. Of course, when Grim gets that Comm Tower, he gets that juicy 40% attack boost, which allows him to uh, two hits a lot of uh, Von Bolt's units. Kind of neglects that 10% defense. It's very strong. Grim Guy now going for his airport. And here we go. Oh, okay, interesting. So he strikes the infantry. This does put him in range of this tank, but he can then strike this tank again. So very aggressive move here. He's probably going to just straight up kill that infantry, I would imagine. Yep, he is. And now he's interrupting the city as well. This is pretty smart. If uh, if Vector wants to interrupt the city, he'll need to move his tank down, which places him in strike range of two of uh, Grim Guy's tanks, and that's not something he wants to do. He could attack this tank, but Grim Guy is covering with this one. Could move down this tank as well. If not, he just he will straight up just lose the city right here. So we'll see what happens. This could uh, already Grim Guy is playing this really well. He's playing aggressively taking advantage of, uh, I think Vector just didn't quite have the right opener for this map. Now moving this mech into the mountains. Really not sure why he decided to build it, but I mean, I guess it can, uh, now that I think about it, the mech can go one, two, yeah. The mech can move over these terrains more easy than an infantry, I guess, but it's still 3,000 though. But yeah, he doesn't he doesn't want a piece of that. He's just gonna forego the city to Grim Guy. So already a very strong opening by Grim Guy right there. He's he's playing this beautifully. So uh, that's gonna earn him a bit of an income advantage in the mid game, which is very nice. Now he's going for the common tower as well. I'm pretty sure he's gonna get it. Moving his recon over here. Now it's threatening these uh, infantry here, so he'll need to bring a tank over. One thing that I've noticed on Golden Probe Redux is that it's very hard 
it's very hard to reinforce or to front switch over the river here. Because you have this mountain right here that kind of blocks this bridge. So, And this forest tile, which slows down any switching over here. So if you want to bring a tank over here, you either have to bring it all the way down from here or you have to bring it over here. And it's not as easy as it sounds, especially not if your opponent controls this area. They can strike your tanks as they're front switching. So this mountain and this rivers right here, they really reduce the mobility that you have front switching over to the sides. But looks like Grim Guy is just going all out in the center here. Oh my goodness. Yeah, he's got so many tanks. You're not gonna see artillery from this guy. There's not gonna be an Inkugark match, ladies and gentlemen. This is gonna be this is gonna be a, an aggressive matchup. So um now, uh, Vector is just preparing. He has to play very cautiously here. Normally, if one bolts against any other CO. Von Bolt could play very cockily, he could move his tank over to the cities and just sit on the cities, and he wouldn't really care that much about the first strike, but against Grimm, he doesn't really have that luxury, because Grimm, with 40%, 30%, soon to be 40% firepower, can smash through his, through his tanks even on properties, and this changes how Von Bolt normally plays. Normally when you play Von Bolt, you can be very arrogant, you can be like, I don't care, I'm just gonna move my units forward and let you strike me, and then if you strike me, I'm just gonna counter-strike you and, and win. But, hilariously enough, this isn't as viable against Grimm. I'm not going to say that Grim counters Von Bolt. I'm not. But it's actually funny that he has a better matchup against Von Bolt than other Tier 4 or maybe even Tier 3 COs. It's, it's pretty hilarious, honestly. So here, Grim Guy is going for his uh, Com Tower. He's now capping the properties. Has a nice little income lead here. Thanks to capping this. He has both of the middle properties right now, which are the contested properties. If he can hold on to them, he's going to be in a good position here. And look how he moves his tanks. They're all covering each other. Every single tank is in range of every single tank. And he keeps building tanks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tanks. My goodness. This guy just won't let up. Look at the amount of firepower this guy has at his disposal right now. This is scary. I mean, fun bolt player is just not used to this. <laughs> They're not used to being, to actually having to be careful and going on the defensive. However, now Vector is bringing in an artillery on the right-hand side. He needs to get an untire down here, though, lest he wants to run into battlecopters from Grim Guy. That would be pretty bad, so he needs to be careful about that, for sure. And now, again, you can see the, the control over the bridges have begun here. This is why Vector is bringing down this artillery right here. If you can control these bridges, it's gonna, you're going to have a massive advantage. You, you can basically choose which side you want to take engagements on, and your opponent will not be able to respond in kind. Again, this map can really, really sneak up on you. Now, Vector is building a medium tank. I don't like this, actually. Uh, medium tanks against Grim, uh, this is something that I was advised against. When I, I remember I was playing a match against the Grim alt on the League a little while back, and after I, 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 I think I either lost or I like just barely beat him. And the Grandmasters told me that you should you should really not build medium tanks against the Grim. And the reason why is that his Battlecopters will tear them to pieces. Absolutely tear them to pieces. And they're just not that great. Like, you'd rather just build tanks against his tanks. So uh, be careful. Neo tanks you could consider building, but then Grim's bombers will, will just destroy them if they ever get in range. So, um... Yeah, just just be careful with uh, be careful with medium tanks against Grim. They're not necessarily as good as you think they're they're gonna be. Day ten rolls in. Grim guy now captures his comb towers. Forty percent day today, and there's the battlecopter. This is what you got to be careful about. There's no untire in range. Vector is being a little cocky here. Now Grim guy is feeling confident to move in with his tanks. And again, look, he's controlling the bridges. Very good. So now he's essentially he can reinforce easily between these two points. And looks like he wants to take the fight on the right-hand side. He actually wants to pressure the position where the artillery is at, which is kind of interesting. That's usually people do the opposite. They move away from the artillery, but Grim Guy, he has he has different ideas in mind here. He wants to uh, he wants to take the battle to the artillery, which is kind of interesting. Also, look at how out of position this medium tank is right here. It is like it, it, it's not even it's going to take so long to actually become relevant. And also, I do think. I do think that uh, this, hmm, yeah, I think Grim Guy will probably just punish him before the before the medium tank even comes in and becomes an issue. Anyway, Vector is now setting up a defensive line here. Uh, he's out of range of the tanks, which is good. He's moving down with this medium tank. I don't really know what this medium tank is supposed to do down here. I guess zone out a bunch of infantry. 
Not sure. It's a bit, bit weird. Um, I guess he has some plans, maybe, but uh, I don't know what those plans are. Again, it's just, you know, it's... You, you gotta be careful with this, because, again, like, this medium tank is sitting on this side, and if Grim Guy just decides to push everything he has on the right-hand side, this medium tank is not gonna be able to reach. Sure, he built a bot. He's building a lot of units just against infantry. He's spreading himself thin against Grim. I think he's not taking this guy seriously at all, and I get it. I, I get that you're not taking this guy seriously at all, because, I mean, he's, you're, you're playing against Grim, so why wouldn't you? Takes a shot here? That's okay. I guess he feels confident because he's backed up by this uh, tank right here. Alright, okay. So he's taking a shot, taking a free shot, but I, I feel like this is not going to be as free as he thinks. Still has to play very defensively. Grim Guy's positioning is very strong right here. Day 11 rolls in. Let's see what he decides to do. Now he builds a medium tank. And he has an artillery too now. I, I, I said you weren't going to see artillery. I guess I was wrong. I guess you shouldn't listen to me. I guess he built artillery after all. And look at look at the damage these Battlecopters are gonna do. It's gonna be insane. Doesn't care about the Empire. He just moves in. Battlecopter's pretty good at eluding Empire due to the forests blocking the bridges here. And yeah, he just takes the shot. Oh my goodness, look at this. Boom. And he blocks it off with infantry. So that's some prime positioning right here. Sure, Grim infantry may not be good, good at walling, but when your opponent has no units to actually follow it up, it doesn't really matter that much, does it? Builds an Untire. And yeah, now he's just dislodging from both of those cities. And setting up to attack. He's not playing overly recklessly. His positioning is... Isn't, this guy plays impeccably well. Like, his positioning is so good. You can really tell there's a big skill ceiling between these two players. Even though Vector's no slouch, I can just tell that Grim Guy's positioning is just far superior. He actually moves in with his medium tank. I wonder if Grim pops his power. I think his tanks can actually deal with a medium tank. Maybe, maybe with a superpower. Now Vector is building up a wall with his artillery right here. Bringing in... Oh, I don't know if that's a smart idea. Pretty sure Grim's tanks can just smash this Untire. Of course, he does have the medium tank backing it up, so maybe he feels confident. But still, I'd be very careful with this. Alright, day 12 rolls in. So far, it's been uh, not been a super eventful match. Both players are just kind of sizing each other up. Grim Guy is taking small wins here and there, though, I will say. But both players are still tied in unit count, relatively equal in income. Grim Guy bringing up his Antire. Positioning his units to prepare for uh, Vector's incoming attack. Now he also has an artillery here. And yeah, he pulls back. Again, Grim has to... Grim, can't, you can't just smash your army into your opponent as Grim. You will die if you do that. You need to wait for the perfect time to strike. And that is why Grim has such a high skill ceiling. Yeah, this is kind of bad too. Um, Pone Bolt medium tanks against Grim infantry gets one shot. And that's tough. That's that's really tough because really infantry on cities they're supposed to be a good part of your wall. Also, you can you can see just how much this Antire will struggle to catch up with this battlecopter. This battlecopter is gonna just dart back and forth between this river. It's gonna be almost impossible to catch up unless you build two Antire, and that's just really tough to deal with. One of the reasons why I consider this map one of the harder standard uh, league maps to play on, at least in the games that I've had on it, I've been very frustrated by these rivers. But now Victor is feeling a little bit more confident. I think he's moving forward now. Uh, he's confident that, you know, he'll be able to shellac Grim. Wow, even building two artillery. That's arrogant right here. I think he re I think he really believes this is going to be an easy win. Building two artillery against a player like that is... I mean, sure, it's a stally match, but that really goes to say that you're very confident in your walling. He moves his infantry back even. Doesn't want to give Grim Guy any freebies. And uh, what's going to happen here? Yeah, he's going to surround the medium tank. Oh, it's a trap, ladies and gentlemen. He trapped it. Doesn't attack, just traps it. And now he has his Antire in range as well, so look at that. Oh my god, this guy reminds me of Voice of Akasha, the way he plays. Imagine if it's actually... Again, I'm going to save it for the end of the video, but I have some theories on who it might be. I have some theories. So, in rolls the tanks. And yeah, Grim Guy is just setting up his units defensively. Let's see what Vector decides to do now. Now he really wants to... And yeah, this is another problem with Grim's infantry, man. You can, you can kill them so easily again. This guy just can't really wall that well. Takes out the recon. Interrupts the cap, even. And takes a shot. Destroys one of Grim Guy's Battlecopters. So this 
Looks like to be a pretty bad turn for our grim guy right here. This is uh, this is not going his way at the moment. It was a nice uh, trap right there. For any other CO, it would have worked, but sadly, due to Grim's reduced defense, it just didn't. So, uh, but now Vector is moving in with his medium tank. He needs to get that anti in range as well. And again, Grim guy doesn't have extra movement, so uh, he he will never really be able to. It's very easy to wall against COs with no movement bonuses. So day 14 rolls in, and it looks like Vector is starting to race ahead here with a unit count lead, slight value lead. Uh, Grim guy is slightly ahead of income, but it doesn't really matter that much. 1k doesn't really matter. And in comes the Knuckle Duster, ladies and gentlemen. This is a 50% increase in firepower. I mean, we have we have to play Grim's team, don't we? During, during Knuckle Duster, we have to play Grim's team. So, yeah, he can now do an absolutely crazy amount of damage. Let's see what he decides to do, shall we? In comes the tank. Boom! In comes another tank. Kaplow! Medium tank. On road! Oof! Look at that! The trap the trap succeeded after all. In comes the tank. Kills the tank! And look at this is what I was talking about. Look at that. Look at that. Knuckle Duster one com tower grim tanks can one-shot von bolt infantry on planes. This is huge! Very few other CEOs can do this. And this actually allows him. Oh! He could have wall broken there almost, I think. I think that might have been a luck roll. I think that might have been a luck roll. I don't have the damage cocks in front of me, but I think that's like a 98 to 104% or something like that. So he rolled a little low on the luck, I think. But a pretty devastating knuckle duster right here. And he's not done. He's not done. Builds more tanks, moves in his artillery. And is he going to attack on the right flank? No, he's actually front switching his entire army over to the left hand side. He sends, I thought he was going to attack with the Battlecopter, but I guess he doesn't want to lose that. But pretty smart, showing a lot of restraint here. I think a lot of players would have just gone ham here. But Grim Guy recognizes that, okay, uh, he just beat, he just punched through his opponent's lines here. He can't win over here, so he's just going to front switch his entire army to the left. Really high level play here. Ooh, that artillery counterattack hurts though. That artillery counterplay hurts. And also, he's got to be careful, Grim Guy. He might lose two units here. And Vector is feeling confident advancing on his flank right now. But look at this just death ball over here. I mean, is that not the most disgusting death ball you have ever seen? Oh, Vector is going in hard here. I think, I think he's panicking a little bit. This seem. Oh my goodness, he's panicking. What the? I think he's either panicking or he's throwing. Because this is not a good... Like, I understand he feels he has to make something happen, but he's just exposing himself here. He's going to get knuckle-dusted. He's going He's going to get a real haymaker, ladies and gentlemen. This is not... This is not good. Look at the amount of tanks Grim Guy has. Oof. Medium tank comes out. Day 15. Now suddenly Grim Guy's ahead by quite a bit. But he needs to deal with this a scary counterattack over here. He needs to deal with the scary counterattack here. And yeah, this is oh boy, Vector man, that was a throw. You're just giving Grim guy. You're just getting you you you're you're presenting your face in front of his knuckles right now, and you're saying dust off my dust off my face with your knuckles, Grim guy. And Grim guy's like, sure, sure, I'm happy to to dust off your of your face with my knuckles. That, that's what I do. Ar har har. Give me some food. Yar har. Oh my god, this is painful to watch. Look at just how Grim Guy is just beating this old man up. This is, watch. <laughs> I told you this guy has no respect. I told you this guy has absolutely zero respect for his elders. He builds a transport copter. Oh, the disrespect. Oh, the absolute disrespect! It's hilarious! Just look at <laughs> it! a transport! That is 100% a BM transport copter right there, ladies and gentlemen. And now he's capturing his properties. I mean, this is... Oh my god, someone needs to call the police. A senior is being beaten up here. But, the Ex Machina is coming in. I think he's, he wants to kill a couple of units just to control where it goes. And here it comes. Where is it going to hit? Boom. Okay. 
That is a pretty devastating Ex Machina. It clears up the entire right-hand flank. And uh, what Grim Guy needs to be careful about here, and what I think Vector can potentially try, is to go for an HQ rush. Because he has a very large army situated around the HQ. He just needs to get his infantry over there, and I think that's what he's doing. So if he can just rush the HQ, he also builds a bomber. That's a pretty smart move. I mean, Grim Guy does have an anti air, but this bomber will be able to eat up tanks now. So even though Vector just took a big pounding, he's still in this match. He's not completely out of it yet. That X Machina kind of got him back into the game. That was a very devastating one. Cleared out the entire right-hand flank. So this is, this game is a lot more even than it, than it may look, although Grim Guy is still ahead by quite a bit. 10k unit value on day 16. But, uh, okay, he's just moving in with the tanks. Finishes off uh, cleaning up some units in the center here. Oh, so many units just falling right now. This amount of firepower, he's just, just cleaning house. Yeah, it's not pretty. And now he's kind of threatening the HQ as well, so this might turn into an HQ rush situation here, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, just look at how he, he's cleaning up, systematically just cleaning the battlefield of threats. And now, suddenly, he has a seven, he has almost 30 units to Vector's 20. And he builds <laughs> another transport copter! Oh my god! <laughs> this guy, this guy is so... <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> Have you... Have you ever seen anyone play like this? I sure haven't. Oh my god, poor Vector, man. I mean, this this is like, he's getting dunked on. He's getting dunked on so hard right now. This has to be bad for morale. I mean, watching a Grim player toy with you this much, it just must not be easy. Yeah, he's gonna take those transport copters, you know? He's like, sure. I mean, honestly, looking at it this, looking at it right now, I am actually wondering if he may be doing this to prevent the airport from being... You know, part of me wants to believe that he's just doing this as a BM, but it might actually be that he's using the transports to stall the capture, because it's actually... this is this working? Look at that. He's not able to cap the airport this turn. So, uh, maybe, maybe it's not actually as BM a move as I thought it was. I mean, it's a little bit of a BM move, but, uh, I mean, if he's gonna block the airport, he might as well do it with a transport copter rather than a batacopter, right? The Battlecopter is a lot more expensive. Day 17 rolls in, and oh my lordy 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 lord, uh, it's a superpower time. Is it? It's no, he pops the Knuckle Duster, not the Haymaker. He's okay, he doesn't need the Haymaker. 50% firepower, that's that's good enough. Or is it 60? I need to bring up the, uh, the, the is it si it's 60? It's 60%. Sorry, I said 50. 70% with Comb Tower. That's pretty disgusting. That's like. That's, that's, the, that's the amount of firepower that other CEOs get on their superpowers, and not even then. I think Max Blast is 60%, 70% with Comb Towers. So, that's pretty disgusting, considering he gets that for 3 stars. And when he's already in a situation where he's brawling with his opponent, and he's in range of everything that he wants to hit anyway, it doesn't really matter that much, does it? I love how he's boxing in the bomber with tanks. That's so... Oh my god, did he trap the bomber? I think he trapped the bomber relation. Not quite, not quite. The bomber can go here. It's a safe, safe zone, but he's zoning it out completely. And the middle is his right now. Once his infantry gets into position, he can start to systematically capture the comm tower and a lot of other properties. <laughs> this is actually a good battlecopter, though. This is actually a good battlecopter. All of Vector's anti air are damaged at this point. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is looking pretty bad for old Fork in the Wheelchair right here. And Grim Guy still has almost another power ready because he popped his Knuckle Duster. So yeah, and Vector runs away with the bomber now. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, no, he did get out of range. I thought for some reason I thought maybe he wouldn't. <laughs> he doesn't kill the battlecopter. This is hilarious. <laughs> he won't let that guy get the airport. That's that's really funny. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's looking bad. It's looking really bad for Vector, but he's still in this game. He still wants to play. Doesn't want to give up to Grim just yet. But now, Grim Guy is starting to capture some properties, and now he equalized the income advantage as well. And there's no anti air in range here. He can just continue to build battlecopters. And this is devastating. Yeah, look, this entire attack is falling apart now. Grim battlecopters are so strong. They're so strong. 
In comes the medium tank as well. I don't know who wins if this medium tank strikes first. I think... Oh, never mind. He has the artillery. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I mean, he does... The Battlecopter is in range now, but it will lo it will die to the anti if he tries to strike it, so... Yeah, this is... Uh, this is scary stuff, man. Some more artillery coming in, building... It needs infantry now, because it needs to actually capture properties. Otherwise, he won't be able to capitalize on his lead right now. But this entire right-hand attack, has, uh, attack has, has completely failed now. There's no way Vector is going to be able to get these properties. All of those units are dead right now. And that 10% defense and that 10% firepower is not doing him any good in this situation, because Grim Guy is just punching through his units like they're made of tinfoil paper. Now he has to withdraw on every single front. And he's so far behind in unit count at the moment, it's impossible for him to get any good walls going. Medium tank goes down. Grim Guy is feeling cocky right now. He's moving in. Oh, he's moving in. He's surrounding the Battlecopter again. I love this play. I mean, it, oh, the <laughs> oh my goodness, I love it so much. This is this is absolutely hilarious. He's so clever with his plays. Yeah, whoever this guy is, he's he's a very strong player. Tank is running out of fuel, ladies and gentlemen. That's a, that's a good valuable tank right there. This tank has seen a lot. And yeah, he doesn't he doesn't want to deal with the medium tank and the bomber. He moves away from those. Why why should he bother with them? Bills and this the battlecopter spam will just commence now. He has a tank lead, he's just gonna spam battlecopters every single turn. Vector has to build Antire, and the Antire is just gonna get smashed by tanks. At this point, there's really nothing he can do. Oh no, the bomber goes in and kills an infantry. What what is he supposed to do? What is he supposed to do? I mean, he has some medium tanks, but the medium tanks are just going to sh get shellacked by the Battlecopters, especially considering Grim Guy has his power already now. So, uh, yeah, this is, uh... This is, this is not good, ladies and gentlemen. This is not good. But let's see if he has some kind of defense. I, I don't think there's really much of anything he can do at this point, because, yeah, now all of his, all of his properties are just getting captured now. And once you have a unit laid like this, it doesn't matter if you're four tiers above. Yeah, that Battlecopter goes down. The Bomber, you don't really need to care about it. You have the Antire. Now, the Von Bolt Bomber, I think, can actually kill the Antire on a base. But Grim Guy has another Antire in range here. As long as he can keep that safe. And you can see he's still walling pretty well here. It's funny, he's not showing the game. Even though he's very far ahead. He's still playing well. He's not making any brash moves. A lot of Grim ults would have really started to play recklessly at this point. But Grim Guy is he's continuing to position his units very wisely. Vector goes in with a medium tank. Bomber comes in as well. I mean, I gotta give him credit for staying in this game, but I, I really don't think there's anything he can do at this point. I guess he just really doesn't want to lose against the Grim Ult. <laughs> Neo Tank comes in, I don't think that's gonna help. But uh, something tells me that we're going to see one final knuckle duster to finish this game. And I think Grim Guy is setting up for it. Now he's capturing this property as well. So now the unit, the unit, the income advantage is really starting to pile up right now. Twenty-four thousand to twenty thousand. With every property that falls now, this bonus will just get equalized. This, this bonus will just grow uh, more and more consequential. But yeah, look at it. I like the, I like his walling right here. He's he's still playing really well. He's not showing this game, even though he's very far ahead. He realizes that if he rushes in and gets a lot of units killed, this. This game could swing back into Von Bolt's favor, especially if he gets a good X Machina off. So day 21 rolls in, and yeah, I guess he's just tired at this point. Oh, yeah, he breaks the wall. I see, it's almost impossible to wall this Grim. I mean, just look at this. It's pretty good attack, honestly. And one, Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess that, that works. This bomber is actually safe from the Antire. Pretty smart play by Grim Guy here. Pretty smart play. And now he's, there's a lot of properties hanging right here, so he needs to be careful. But uh, let's see what Grim Guy decides to do on his next turn. His Knuckle Duster, his Haymaker is ready as well. I, I want to see a Haymaker, to be honest, guys. I really want to see a Haymaker. Please, please pop a Haymaker. Is it going to be a Knuckle Duster or a Haymaker? What is he going to do? He attack. Oh, he's attack. Oh, there we go. Knuckle Duster comes in. Kills the tank with the Antire. Oh, look at this. Oh, 8 HP of damage. In comes the tank to finish off. And now he's just murdering the old man's infantry, my goodness. And again, it's another surround. This guy surrounds his opponents so cleverly. Is he going to bring in another unit? He has to, right? Or is he just going to let that medium tank... No, no, he's surrounding. <laughs> he's surrounding so well. 
moves his tanks away. Again, artillery around this river position, so incredibly strong. Impossible to get rid of, especially considering your air units are on the other side of the map as well. So what are you really going to do here? And yeah, now, Vec now Vector is just going for it. He's trying to get... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought... We I thought... <laughs> uh, I thought we were... I thought we were going to see a... Uh <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were gonna see a uh, an ex machina here, but nah, he just he just he just gives up. <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> oh, poor guy, poor guy, poor guy. That was very very entertaining. That was extremely entertaining. And uh, whoever Grim guy is, he's, he sure is turning heads on the on the league, because I think this guy will probably hit top ten very very soon. He's playing a lot of games, so. Mm -mm. So now, I would like to speculate who this guy might be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the top 20. Now, I am making an assumption here. I am making an assumption here, and it might not be correct. It might not be correct. I am assuming that this guy is among the top 20 players. Because I'm thinking if he can reach top 16 as grit, he surely he must be top 20 on the standard ladder. Otherwise, right? Surely he has to be. So we're gonna go through each of these players, and I'm gonna think I'm gonna say how likely I think it is that, that these guys are is a Grim guy, right? So in Kugork, I'm pretty sure it's not in Kugork. Uh, in Kugork is busy playing his own games right now. He wouldn't have time to do a Grim ult. Uh, Operation Maxstorm, no. Maxstorm recently like talked about how stressed out he was because he had too many games running at once, and he was struggling to find time for all of them. And as we all know, Operation Maxstorm spends like 14 days per move. So uh, yeah, I couldn't. It, it can't be Maxstorm. It just can't be. Poland, it definitely is not Poland because um, they fought each other recently on the ladder and I'm gonna cast that match shot too. It was absolutely insane. It was Grim versus Rachel. So I'm pretty sure it's not Poland unless Poland is literally playing himself. Uh, Nonova, I don't think it's Nonova. I don't know this guy super well. I casted one of his matches during the Egg Cup, but uh, and he's a very strong player, but I don't think it's Nonova. Don't know who this is, so JTQVN. I've never heard of this guy before. I never costed any of his matches, so it could be him, maybe. Soth? D just keeps telling us that we need to talk more about Soth. It's like, uh, Soth is so underrated, guys. Talk more about Soth. Could be Soth, maybe? I don't know Soth that well. I don't know if he'd be capable of doing something like this. Torgred. Now, this is the this is a highly likely candidate, I think. This is a highly likely candidate. Who do we know that loves to build tanks and smash them into his opponents? Yeah, it's Tordred. Who do we know who could do something like this? I, I think Tordred. It might be Tordred. I think it's very likely that Grim guy is Tordred. Lillian, I don't know this guy very well. I think he's... Is he active at the moment? I think he's like a, one of the older players. Uh, don't know if this is the guy. I I very much doubt this is... I, I know he's playing in a bunch of tournament games at the moment. He's a very strong player, but I don't think he has time for this Grim shenanigans stuff. Witty? Pretty sure it's not Witty. He's also part of my Grandmaster's Discord. I, I don't think it's Witty. I, I would be very, very surprised. Witty is kind of... He's not super active at the moment. And I, 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 I just don't see him playing around with a Grim Alt at the moment. Lord Clefairy, don't know who this guy is. Never cast at any of his matches. So this one, I, I really don't know. A true boss. True boss. I could see I could see him being Grim Guy. I could. He sounds like something he'd do. He's a, he's a he's a funny guy. He's a funny guy, and he's definitely good enough to 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 be grim guy. So that I say, if it's not Tordred, I could see a true boss being behind this. He recently started a YouTube channel. I could very easily see him making like a video series playing as Grim. Data shifter, don't know this guy. Never casted any of his matches. Darth Noob, I've seen a couple of his matches. He's a very good player, but I, I think it's highly unlikely it's him. Not sure, though. Could be. Random Ways? I've casted... I think he had... Um, I think D just casted one of his matches not too long ago. Again, don't know much about this player, so I don't know if it's him. Well, Grim Guy, there he is. Raider Alcaraman? I know for sure it's not Raider Alcaraman. I, I just know. <laughs> it's not It's not Alcaraman. Uh, Shiyu, don't know who this is. Crawfy, don't know who this is. Monte Sigurdsson? I played this guy once on stream. Actually, I think. Or was it his Anagi? I don't remember. I don't think it's Monty. I really don't think it's Monty. I think this guy is Norwegian, but I'm not sure. Um, so that's assuming that Grim Guy is one of these top 20 players, which is uh, which is a guess. 
But let me know, guys. Who do you think Grim Guy is? Do you have any? Do you have any theories? He's playing really well. He's, he's continuing to beat players. He's gonna he's gonna hit. He's gonna hit top ten very soon. It's gonna be very interesting to see him go up against one of the more one of, one of the really good players. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed this really funny replay. And do you think Grim is actually good, or is this guy just an absolute monster? Could be a combination of the two, maybe. Anyway, Grim guys, I hope you feel validated. My name is Finn Mengs, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!